Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Immaculate Show. How's everyone doing today? Um, let me put the invite in the chat. Um, I welcome anybody that wants to come on to the live stream. Uh, not a whole lot to talk about today, except for the Bottega Veneta Resort Collection that was just released uh, by Matthew Blesey, the creative director. Um, let me see, uh, come click the, all right. So I put the invite up <clears throat> if anybody wants to come on to the live stream more than welcome to uh just click that link i'll put you backstage and then uh come on in we'll uh talk some bottega veneta um yeah so matthew blesey um the creative director for bottega just released their resort collection uh today earlier this morning uh was not something i was expecting but at the same time there were some hints um asap rocky was seen wearing a lot of new Bottega Veneta stuff and he was caught, you know, photos with paparazzi and it looks like he was filming some things, taking some photos around the Mel the Melrose shop in Los Angeles. So it seems like Bottega was, you know, having ASOP where um wear some of these new Bottega resort clothes um because they knew they were they were going to drop it soon. So that'll be the first topic we talk about today, um, the Bottega Veneta Resort Collection. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let me pull up my screen. And like I said, if anybody wants to hop onto the live stream, please give me your opinion about it. And uh, yeah, we can just hop right in. All right. So I got Vogue Runway already uh, pulled up. And we could read the coverage real quick if we want to. Um, this is by Nicole Phelps. She's been work she's been writing for Vogue Runway for a long time now, and she's like super well respected as far as her opinion. Um, so it says it's not about the total look. Even in a fashion moment like this one, when everyone's talking about real clothes, you don't hear a line like that from most designers. But it's what Bottega Veneta's Matthew Blesey said as he launched its run-through of his, his pre-spring collection. With the team, he explained, we talked a lot about what makes individual special. The pieces they wear and the pieces that tell a story. The pieces, sometimes, that are a bit off, sometimes that feels very personal. What makes you different from others? What inspired the exercise, Blesey explained was a trip home to his parents' place, where he found himself going through his childhood wardrobe. A crab print dress of his sister's made an impression, as did the incredible labels and slightly off proportions of his own old clothes. The crab print dress, the crab print dress has been reimagined here as a sweater and matching skirt hand knit in shades of turquoise and coral. On an ivory sweater in the same in the same vein of scaly snake twists around the torso, it's forked tongue and flicking red. Forked tongue flicking red. As for the oversized label stitched to the back of a tailored vest, it is indeed likely to conjure youthful memories for all who sees it. Blessy's instinct to create serious fashion out of an unserious items fills of a piece of what he's done on his runways, making jeans, tank tops, and flannel shirts out of the finest leather and in the process and the and in the process turning mundane garments into collector items there is also a dress here whose print features a dancing marionette the camita del art was another reference this season blesey said per parallels between the harold quinn costumes of its performers and bottega veneta's own intrachato motif a leather coat in mint, burgundy, and white, and a bright yellow and black woven button-down and matching pants are showcases for the label's 
striking artisanship, artisanship, and the design teams embrace a fun and on the note. Oh wait, that's a mess up. <laughs> on that note, a large intrachato tote was constructed with an irregular weave that's called to mind TV static or broken pixels. Definitely not just another it bag. All right, so that was a quick write up. So essentially, they explained. So uh, Blessy went to his parents' home and saw a lot of like the childhood clothes of him and his sister. You know, they they he saw the um, the slightly off proportions, the colors, uh, the crap print motif on one of the dresses for his sister, um, and he just saw like a lot of like childhood um, designs, colors. Um, you know, in, in the clothing for for this collection, uh, or that was the inspiration for this collection. And um, yeah, and obviously, like, Bottega has made it known in recent years that they're, they're going to take some basic garments and make it out of leather in some really, like, luxe way. Um, so, yeah, let's take a quick look at the collection. Tell me what you guys think in the chat. And uh, or if anybody wants to hop on the live stream, then we could talk about it. So 69 looks. So there was a lot of them. This was this is a pretty big collection for a resort collection. You know, a resort collection could range anywhere from, you know, 18, 20 looks all the way up to here, 60, 69. Um, hey, Fashion Rodman, thanks for stopping by, man. Appreciate it. Um, so Bottega Veneta. So this is the first look right here. Um, I really like this bag a lot. So I think this is the reference for um, that TV static, um, the pixelated look, what they were talking about with this design. Um, everything here is just tailored like really nice. And it looks like these heels are, um, you know, together with this uh, like long, um, I don't know, just is that like a long pant or sock? Um, it looks like it's just together. So um they might have these online already so we could take a closer look later uh so look number two okay pretty basic um i do like this bag a lot a lot of people talked about this bag on twitter um this is a really unique piece with um the you know like two sleeves of a sweater being tied around the handle so um yeah just a really really cool piece sweater weather right even for the bag uh all right so uh this is our first men's look that we see um pretty basic just a beautiful details around the collar um some black trousers um yeah just a pretty generic piece but uh generic look but um also like the details are really nice beautiful leather dress beautiful leather bag with that mint and brown intertrato uh weave that they have for it a uh, beautiful look right here okay so more tailoring for the men um yeah i love the proportions of this i love the colorway it's just very classic um you know the pants and the shoes are like earth tones and the the gray um jacket looks really nice too just very professional minimalist um but um looks looks very very nice so this is the dress that he talked about in his interview with Vogue with the crab print motif that he saw on his sister's dress when she was younger. And he made this into a two-piece. So as you can see, it's a sweater top with a skirt. Um, but he took that crab print motif and uh, made it a jacquard print onto uh, this knitwear. And this beautiful, um, I guess you would just say like a sky blue color. Um, just a really beautiful... Um, way to put it. Okay, so it's like a overcoat with um, the sleeves cut off. Interesting look, playful, um, you know, a little bit more relaxed fit uh, with the entire look, even with the pants. Um, so it's more of a casual look in uh, a beautiful bag with the intrachato weave in this like olive green color. Really nice. All right, so my uh, very unique pieces. Um, this bag is crazy. What would you call that bag? It's like a pumpkin. <laughs> it's like a pumpkin-shaped bag. Um, 
but it's very unique. And uh, I'm curious to see this whole look right here. It's uh, looks like a really nice, um, like, uh, what kind of green would you say that is? Like a, I wouldn't say it's an olive green. It's a little bit lighter, like a broccoli green, <laughs> broccoli green or asparagus green. Um, and obviously some very interesting shoes as well. Uh, this is a beautiful coat right here. You can just tell with the layering, um, the big uh, lapels, the large buttons or give it like really refined details to it. Um, I love the tailoring for it. It just looks very professional. And one thing Bottega is pushing is their their ties. Um, a lot of them are in leather and they're all like different designs, different motifs, different colors. And uh, this one's more like a brown. Um, what would you say that is? What kind of scale is that? It's some type of like reptile scale brown. Um, really cool. So this is more of like that quiet, luxury, minimalistic clothes um, that's been very popular right now. You know, the good thing about Matthew Blessing, I think what Bottega does really well is they can make both, right? They can make the very high end, just classic minimal clothes like this, or they can make the kind of like wacky and wild, um, but also just like beautifully crafted clothes as well. And uh, this is like more of their minimalistic look with the classic trench coat and beautiful fabric, beautiful color, fits well, proportioned well, and then obviously one of their um, popular bags she's holding as well. All right, so this is another um, sweater. Uh, we see a lot of knitwear in this collection, uh, especially with like the winter coming up. Um, it's more casual, more, more relaxed fitted, but it does have that uh, that that woven like intrachato design to it but combined with different colors and um you know these these diamond uh like i guess details um so yeah this is uh this is a nice piece nice look all right just like the the all one color monochrome look with the the, the sling bag that he's holding on to um this is just a really beautiful outfit right here i like it a lot and I love this color. It, it you know it reminds me of like a denim, but I bet it's made out of some type of wool or cotton. And uh, yeah, just a beautiful look. Uh, yeah, when I was looking at these photos earlier, this is like one of my favorite coats in the entire collection. Um, it's like a man. How would you describe this look? So it's like a yellow with a tint of you know, some black and a little bit of orange specks in there. And it's just this like beautiful marbled look that's a different hue than, you know, your traditional like gray and black um, herringbone jacket. So this is uh, one of my favorite garments of like this entire collection right here. And as you could tell with the tie, he's wearing a gray leather tie as well. So all their ties, I think all their ties in this collection are all leather. So really, really cool. Always with the details with, with Bottega. Um, all right, another beautiful um, jacket and uh, with the matching skirt and these leather um, heels, uh, boots, I guess you would say. Um, I wonder how high they go. Do they just go to the knee high? Are they knee high boots? Um, just a very, just kind of like the out of this world, just kind of really stand out pieces, but they do it like, what the craftsmanship is just beautiful and being able to pair it with a green uh, top and bottom looks really cool. All right. This is a beautiful dress right here. Um, so it's like speckled. Uh, let's see if we can zoom in. Okay. It's like, um, okay. So it is sequined. It looks sequined. Yeah. Or is it? It looks like it. So it almost looks like it's a knit with some sequins into it. And it almost gives a vibe of like a leather, uh, like a leopard print, but it's more of just like dots and static. Um, but this is a beautiful dress. I always just love a long sleeve dress. And then they also have the, the high collar um, that goes up the neck, which oh, looks really good as well. 
All right, so more tailoring. It's a very classic look, um, but the pants are cropped. Um, they're a little flared at the bottom as well. So it gives it a very unique silhouette, um, especially with um, just like skinny legs and those boots coming out of the, the flared pants. Um, but yeah, the tailoring looks really nice, very classic, very clean. And uh, yeah. All right, so here's some more fun garments. Um, it's hard to tell what my, what is that. Uh, so is that like a a girl going up a ladder? It looks like. Um, yeah. So I wonder if he got that from one of his old uh, sisters, like um, garments or you know dresses or shirts or whatever, um, because he said that was an inspiration for you know some of this collection. So I wonder if we saw that, um, you know, something from like the, the childhood collection and they were able to, um, you know, make that into this like beautiful long skirt. All right. So uh, this is a very casual wear, but some beautiful denim and uh, yeah, this jacket or overshirt is probably what you would call it. Um, it's like a plaid overshirt, but this fabric is made out of some type of like mohair or something. Um, so it's, yeah, so he's like been able to take the classic um, like plaid overshirt, which is like super popular, right? And then add his own twist of like luxury to it and in this beautiful fabric. And, you know, it's still very casual wear, but at the highest level. So. Yeah, another great look. Like this collection is just like, like resort collections aren't supposed to be this good, but it really is. <laughs> um, all right, so another uh, like dinner uh, dinner jacket over a sweater. Uh, this denim when you can when you see a little like shine on there, you could tell that it's leather, and that's something that they've been known for these last couple of years. Of Matthew Blessy is making regular garments um out of leather so uh, i'm almost certain these are these are leather jeans right here and uh he has this really cool bag too beautiful bright pink color um it's like oversized which has like been a trend um so another another good look right here uh this one's interesting um this is like a velour or some type of um velvet fabric dress and she's wearing the the knee high boots with the interchato weave um yeah it's an interesting look this is a beautiful jacket right here beautiful trench coat very classic but it also has these details to you know make it stand out from like your typical off the rack jacket and uh she has these thigh high boots or probably knee high boots to go with it as well in this like really cool like marbled yellow color um everything in this collection is just so good uh this oversized sweater looks so comfy doesn't it um it's just this beautiful um cable knit that uh just looks like so comfy like you just want to wrap your entire body in it and i like that it's oversized too just like playing with the volumes and proportions of it and she has this beautiful crocodile embossed leather uh, bag and this like really cool mint color, which I really, really like a lot. And uh, yeah, so these might be like thigh high boots. You know, I thought a lot of these boots might have just gone up to the knees and they were just covered with the dresses. But this one, you see it going pretty high um, of her waist is like up here. Then, yeah, these might go all the way up her thigh, which are. Interesting. Unless they're leggings, unless they're actual leggings with the shoes built into it, which could be. We could look on the website after this and see what they actually are. Uh, classic. Uh, it's like a military green look. Um, some really cool Intrachato boots that uh, they've had on sale before. Uh, another leather tie that has the ostrich print on it. I doubt they're using ostrich skin, um, but uh, uh, another like really casual but also elevated look. 
So I love the proportions on this. I like how he's able to make clothes that are also that are not just like form fitting, but also relaxed and playing with like silhouettes and proportions. And that's something that he said in the interview, right? He said that he was going to play with things that are a little bit disproportioned because that's what he saw with his clothes at his parents' house from him and his sister when they were growing up. And uh, I think this coat speaks to that as well. You know, he was able to make this a little bigger, a little more relaxed fitted. Like, look how big these cuffs are in the sleeves. And it's just oversized, but it's proportioned to like really well. And when you combine it with these leggings that with the shoes built in, it just gives it like the juxtaposition silhouette of like a very uh, voluminous top and a very narrow bottom, which I think looks really good. I, I love that silhouette anytime a designer does that or a stylist does that, I should say. So this is the one uh, sweaters that were going around on Twitter and Instagram. Um, you know, a lot of people were talking about this. It's just like playful. It's just wacky. I'm sure he he said he saw this like snake detail, this motif in, um, you know, his childhood clothes when he was visiting his parents' house where he drew that inspiration for this collection. And he made this into this beautiful like cream colored sweater with this snake just like wrapping around it. And uh, it looks like something from, you know, like a child's like book or, you know, something a, a child would like. But he made it into this like ultra luxe sweater. Really cool. Really cool idea. Um, you know, it's something that's different than like your just typical minimalist, quiet luxury um, clothing. So another one of these uh, like marble jackets. This one looks a little furry, so it might be some like mohair or um, some type of wool. Um, but yeah, it just looks very warm, very cozy. He's wearing some leather pants in like a brown color. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful coat right there. That's that's like a standout piece. All right, so this one we only see the back, but you could just tell this is a beautiful dress. The way it's form fitting, the way it's um, uh, you know, you see like the detail like around the neck. Like I don't even know what the front looks like, but you can just tell like you see the back. You know, it's going to be a beautiful dress. Um, and also this bag here. They also this one has two sleeves tied, um, just like that other bag we saw previously. That was like a sweater knitwear material. This one looks like it's actual sleeves of a dress shirt. So. Really cool idea. Um, I feel like I've never seen that before, so I, I really like that a lot. Just a very unique perspective on the bag. Oh, yes, these socks. So these match, obviously, the sweater we just saw. But, um, yeah, these are these are supposed to be fun, right? It's supposed to be fun and unique and, um, you know, match that sweater, obviously. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know who's going to buy those. <laughs> unless um unless you just want to wear them around your house but yeah so these uh have like a leather bottom um a, like a thick leather bottom so you could wear them outdoors but in reality if, if, i don't know if anybody's gonna be wearing those outside <laughs> but what i really like about this is this coat this coat is gorgeous um it's in a beautiful like dark tones with the black and gray um you know that plaid pattern um the proportions are perfect. I love like the silhouette of it. And um, it's also professional on the top, but then very playful on the bottom, right? Um, and then he has this big like weekend bag that is, um, you know, with him. So uh, I love this coat right here. This coat is gorgeous. Big fan. All right, this one, uh, I think they just forgot the model and uh, they just have this hanging on a hanger. <laughs> uh so this is, um, you know, the mint green is something they implemented a lot into this collection, especially with their bags, it seemed like. And uh, this is one of the garments to, like, match those bags. And they also have this uh, denim, like, Western shirt underneath. Um, just uh, just for layer layering perspective. But I, I wonder if this top one is leather. You always have to... You always have to... Um, think about that with Bottega now you're like oh this like could be a t-shirt in cotton or it could be leather so it could be like a $800 shirt 
or three thousand dollar leather shirt. <laughs> now this is this is just gorgeous. Uh, one of my favorite coats, if not my favorite coat in this collection. When I was going through uh, these photos earlier, I love the look of this entire outfit. It's just beautiful. The um, proportions, you know, this is kind of like a. It's it's not really cropped. It's kind of cropped. Uh, the the jacket underneath the overcoat, but um, I don't know the the mo the leg the legs on this just look a little longer to me. Um, but what really stands out to me is this this overcoat. This overcoat is gorgeous. Um, I just love the uniqueness of like this layering and. Um, you know, the color of it, and you could just see like the pattern, the weaves, you know, are vertical on this and the big cuffs, um, and the size of it. It's just a beautiful coat. Um, one of my favorites in this collection for sure. All right. So, another, uh, like a faux fur coat, this mint green color, which is popular with this collection. Um, yeah, don't see the front, but. Um, looks like the Grinch. <laughs> now this one, um, the, the clothing is a little unexciting to me, although I do really like this undershirt with that pattern. Um, but this bag looks amazing. I love this bag. Um, it's like a, like a reddish brown, uh, with the intrachato weave with this like cream color or like light brown color, tan color. And, uh, yeah, this tote bag just looks gorgeous. I really like this bag a lot. Um, and I like this shirt, too, um, underneath it as well. But this bag is, like, what really stood out to me when I looked at this collection. Yeah, this is one of the standout pieces. A lot of people were talking about this one. Uh, so it's, like, a woven, intrachato, all-leather jacket with the, the brown, the white, the mint green. Really beautiful piece. I'm sure it's very expensive. We could look at the website after this. Um, but yeah, that is just a beautiful coat. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is like a definitely an investment piece, one that you, you hold on to for a long time. All right, this one's a little hard to see. Um, not much we see of the shirt. Uh, I'm assuming they're also highlighting the jewelry here. I really don't know a whole lot about jewelry. But this looks like a beautiful necklace with the matching earrings. Um, those earrings look heavy, so I don't I don't know if they'll be uncomfortable for women by, you know, after wearing them for some time. But I do like the scaling on this necklace, and then she's wearing this off the shoulders like puffer puffer top, um, and just like your basic black. Uh, another beautiful dress here, and this like gorgeous yellow. Um, it's like a canary yellow, uh, like the bird, but I really like the long sleeves as well. I don't know. It just adds like a sense of elegance to it that I really like. And the details of the little, um, I don't know. What do you call those? Just like a, a knit, knit balls at the end of this. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is, a. Definitely something you could wear like d during the daytime or an evening wear as well. So this is another, pe uh, another look that was going pretty viral today on social media. Um, the green and yellow intrachato weave for this entire look. Um, all leather. Uh, looks like it's fitted well. Um, yeah, this is uh, very eye-catching, obviously. You know, you wear this to be like, Somebody, somebody knows that, you know, you're, uh, what you're wearing when you wear this. So very like a standout piece from this collection. All right. So this one's, uh, seems pretty basic, a little more relaxed fitted, a little more casual wear, but in this like chic blackness. Um, and then they have these, uh, like candy cane striped high heels, um, in leather. Um, to give it a little bit of like pizzazz to the, to the outfit. But yeah, I do like the proportions for this and it's not your typical collar. I did notice that. Um, so it just buttons like a regular, 
I don't know, like how would you describe that? It's almost it almost buttons like a cuff all the way up to your neck. Um, so interesting perspective. Um, so it's not not your regular collar. Uh, some more tailoring. Um, yeah, in this uh, like plaid striped. Um, it's like a dark gray color. Um, yeah, very form fitting, tailored very well. Um, with the beautiful like um, argyle uh, sweater underneath. So just a very classic, minimal look right here. All right, so all leather uh, jacket with pants. Um, these pants to be seem to be a little more flared out than the typical ones. So this one's not as form fitting as some of the other looks. This one plays with a little more volume, but beautiful leather. Um, something that you could wear, you know, during the day to work or even at nighttime for evening wear. And uh, yeah, just a beautiful trench coat that's not very long. Um, and then leather pants to match it. So I really like this one a lot. This like Argyle checkered pattern um, in this yellow and brown looks really cool. And I really like this label here. I saw they put this label on a handful of garments and um, it's just like really, really cool. They have this like, um, they have that dog playing chess um, logo here, which is what they made into a sweater a couple of years ago. If I remember right, it was Matthew Blessey's, um dog and they just took that dog and put it on to a sweater and the dog was playing chess. And it looks like they made that the logo for this um you know, for this uh, label here. And uh, I think that's really cool. Um, but this colorway is just awesome. I, I really like this color a lot. Then he's wearing some leather trousers to match with it. But I'm a huge fan of this sweater. All right, looks like she's wearing um, like a pea coat. That's, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's, yeah, I don't think it's a dress, but she's just not wearing any pants with it. Um, I really like this bag a lot too. I like when black and blue and white get meshed together. Um, it, I think it's just a really cool colorway, whether it's bags, clothing, anything. Um, I think the, that col those colors just go well together. Um, but this pea coat is really nice. You could tell it's just, um, made out of really nice material. It's nice and thick. I love like the padded shoulders for it. Um, the sleeves are a little more form fitting than some of the other jackets. So that's a good one. Um, so this is another playful dress. It's like, um, it's knitted, but I don't know what it, is that like a tree? What is that? Uh, is this, yeah, hard to, hard to tell what it is. Maybe they'll have other pictures, but this one, uh, so it's like a, yeah, it's like a knitted dress, but then she has like a shirt underneath that has the big um, Bottega Veneta label on there. Um, yeah, hard to tell what that is. If anybody knows, tell me in the chat. Interesting. But again, in that that mint green color, which is uh, uh, obviously been used a lot in this collection. Um, more just like casual wear. Um, yeah, so this is like a jacket with, uh, you know, more relaxed fitted, huge pockets. Um, looks like they have pockets on both sides and this cool, like candy cane tote bag. Um, it's like an oversized tote bag. So just a, a cool, um, outfit that, uh, yeah, just looks very classic minimal uh, all right so this is probably another uh design that's inspired by this childhood clothing this looks like pinocchio here um you know holding onto a tree or holding onto something um in this beautiful like maxi dress so and i, I love the colorway the, the black and blue i think just go go really good together uh this is a gorgeous two-piece uh, or it might be a dress. No, I think it's a two piece with these unbuttoned. Um, 
Yeah, it's just like very like it's more like form fitting on the top, and then the dress just flares out. Um, the skirt flares out at the bottom, so it's like very tight at the top, but then it puffs out almost like a gown. And then she's wearing these like crazy colored boots uh, with the intrachato weave in blue and yellow color. So um, just a beautiful outfit, really. Um, and I love the the play with the silhouette and um, the materials as well, like the colorways and everything. So cool. Uh, so apparently this sweatsuit is made out of leather. And all of this is made out of leather, I believe. So this hoodie, the zip up hoodie, the sweatpants, uh, the shoes, and also this plaid overshirt is all made out of leather. You're gonna if you would see somebody wearing this, you would think, oh, he's just dressed very casual, but he's actually wearing like twelve thousand dollars worth of Bottega Veneta clothing. <laughs> but you know, Bottega is known as a leather house and they make some of the finest leather products in the world. And, you know, applying that to like basic garments is like such a unique take um, that's stood out. Um, this is all leather uh, fire. Um, <clears throat> if I had to assume this is all leather, so leather sweatpants and then she's wearing the same shirt it looks to be a little shorter. So this is the women's one. Um, and leather as well. Just a big puffy coat. Um, it's at a navy navy color uh, with some introchato uh, boots in black. Um, yeah, just a big puffy coat. All right, so I did like this one a lot. Um, I like the colors of this entire look. But also just this dress too. It almost reminds me of like utilitarian um, look to it with all the pockets. Uh, almost has like this military aspect to it. But uh, I love the silhouette of it. The tailoring is nice. Um, I like the colors underneath it to give us some contrast. And then this very wacky bag with this uh, red and white um, weave. And then the the knit. Um, strings around it. So just a beautiful look. I just love the proportions and then the color white that they used with it. All right. So this is like a, a classic just shirt and tie with the trousers. I feel like there's really nothing special about this. Um, looks like the details of, um, oh, this is somebody swimming. I guess I didn't notice that. So as you could see, it's somebody like diving into a lake or the pool swimming and then um you know getting out and then going back in interesting details i didn't know that that's cool um i'm sure this tie is leather as well because it looks like all of their ties are leather in this collection all right so more um skirts with the quarter zip um yeah beautiful colors unique shoes so yeah. All right, so this is probably like an evening wear dress, just something that's very elegant. Obviously, we don't see the the front, but um, yeah, looks really nice. And then they have this like beautiful uh, gold detail. All right, so this is a really nice orange jacket. This is the same jacket that ASAP Rocky, ASAP Rocky was wearing um, the other day. Um, just a beautiful leather trench coat in this bright orange and it's paired with this like brown jumpsuit underneath with this leather tie. Um, yeah, this colorways goes really well together with the brown and orange. And uh, yeah, just a beautiful trench coat. All right, very furry, very fluffy. Um, big coat with matching shoes. Not really much to say there. <laughs> All right, so this coat is gorgeous. I like this one a lot. Um, you know, it's a beautiful or, uh, brown trench coat with the matching skirt. Um, huge pockets. I love the leather belt to it. These sleeves are a little bit longer, so 
um, you know, the plane with the proportions and then the padded shoulders as well. But yeah, this coat is gorgeous. I really like this coat a lot. I just love the tailoring of it, the, the proportions and then the color of it. All right, so this is unique. Um, I do like this pattern a lot. There was a men's shirt that we saw earlier that was similar to this that I liked. And uh, I really like this colorway and the added detail of that belt around like the upper waist or like the lower part of the stomach um, is like a nice detail. So I wonder if these are actually like linked up to each other in some way um, to make it look like two pieces. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. All right, so like a similar pattern, but in a trench coat, uh, bright yellow, big lapels. Um, yeah, just uh, a beautiful coat. I like the orange. It's, uh, I mean, the the yellow, I'm sorry. Um, just looks really nice. It's another solid trench coat from Bottega. All right, so more knitwear. Um, this one's like a scenery, um, like a mountain in the background uh, with the sunset, with the red clouds or sunrise. So, cool. Yeah, so I really like the jacket with the shorts look. I, I'm always a huge fan of that. And then I love this pattern of this jacket as well. Um, I think it looks really good. And they have that matching, obviously, with the shirt and shorts underneath um this coat but i i really do like this pattern uh, i'm glad they're implementing this a lot in this collection because they had this pattern before um in a couple looks um so i'm glad that they're like really diving into this this pattern right here all right we're almost done all right so another oversized cable knit sweater looks very comfy very warm all right, a big puffy coat, but it's like cropped. It's not, um, it doesn't cover up the whole body like that other coat that we saw earlier. Um, and then this one has some, you know, relaxed fitted trousers, some pants that are kind of voluminous. So, um, yeah, and they're all matching, all matching one color. Looks good. And I, I bet this, this tie is leather as well. Yeah, so this one's unique. So I really like this top a lot. I think it looks really nice. I like the vertical stripes and the green and mint green color combination. Uh, looks very unique. But then look at these pants. Look how the hem is at the bottom. It's like a, it's like a backwards, like slanted hem, right? It's not, it's not your typical like just flat, uh, perpendicular with the ground. Um, yeah, those are really unique. That's something that stood out to me when I was looking at this collection earlier. Uh, so this here, um, yeah, it looks like your basic, like, is, I don't even think this is a sweater. It looks like a shirt, just over, like an oversized shirt over this um, button-up shirt and tie. But this this bag is cool. I like how they're able to take that those leather strips and put like a pattern of different colors into there sporadically. Looks cool. All right. Um, just like a casual shirt um, with some shorts, some boots. Um, yeah, really nothing to this. Wait, is this a... Uh, this shirt might be layered over another shirt. You see those two buttons right there? Huh, interesting. All right. Okay, nice uh, nice dress for the evening. It has uh, the mint color details um, around the shoulders. And uh, yeah, some fun shoes. What are those toys called? It's like the... Those little like plush balls that have like the rubber, they're like rubber things. Um, I don't know what those are called, but that's what it reminds me of. All right, some tailoring. This one's more relaxed fitted than some of the other ones. 
looks like the shirt and tie are made out of um either some it's probably velvet um i don't think it's velour but yeah it's probably velvet um and like the mint color green that they used a lot in this collection uh yeah just a nice suit um a beautiful jacket i like this jacket a lot um the leather trench coat and uh, I like how they continue with this pattern. I don't know what this pattern is called, where it has these little like dots of colors. It's almost like imperfections, like different types of like um, colored, you know, wool. Um, kind of like what they do with tweed, right? With tweed, they have the like different colors that they implement when they're like making like a like when Chanel makes a jacket and they use tweed they're um you know they're feeding like different colors into there i wonder if that's how they make this pattern if somebody knows let me know um like do they just like feed in like some some uh cush ball shoes there you go um yeah that's what they're called those uh shoes that we were just looking at but how do they make this pattern oh uh, that'd be uh really interesting to know Yeah, like this. Like, how do they make that? Do they just like feed in some, uh, some thread while they're making this? Uh, either way, this is a uh, another look. Look sixty eight, just about done. Um, this beautiful quarter zip, um, and I love how they play with the proportions here as well. So like the top is more fitted, and then she's wearing this beautiful flowing skirt in this gorgeous like baby blue sky blue color. Um, which looks really nice. And then the last one is just, uh, looks like just a tank top with the Bottega Veneta label on the back. So that was the collection. Um, you know, 69 looks. That was a lot. That was a lot to go through. But which one was your guys' favorite? Do you have one? I know we went through a lot right there. I talked for, I talked for 40 minutes about this collection. <laughs> uh, sorry if I was being too wordy with i was probably stopping and talking about each each look way too often or for way too much um let's look at i think they already have this on their website let's look at some of the um all right so yeah they do all right so women's all right so let's take a look at some of these prices huh Okay, so this um, tricolor interchato leather coat, $16,000. But this is an investment piece. This is a piece that's going to be like, you know, something that's probably worth a lot of money down the line, I'm going to assume. This is, a, this is a piece of art in this beautiful colorway. Um, yeah, this is gorgeous right here. I like that a lot. But sixteen thousand dollars—a lot of money, obviously. Oh, only only a few amount of people could afford that. Um, they have that in the skirt too. Beautiful colorway. Uh, let's see what else they have here. Okay, so leather draped dress, six thousand. Um, these bags, bags. Okay, so this is one of the leather shirts. Um right here man six thousand dollars for this i don't know would you guys buy that it just looks like a plain um plaid shirt right but then obviously it's in like this beautiful supple leather as opposed to regular cotton or wool um or it's usually like a flannel right like a flannel for the winter but yeah it's a little pricey Uh, what do you guys think about these? These like sock boots. Um, it looks like they have some lining in them to actually keep them up so they're not loose by it. Um, that way they're not not falling down. Oh, these are the jogger pants. Are these pants? Uh, yeah, the trousers. $6,000 for sweatpants. Would you guys pay that? <laughs> it's in a marbled, <clears throat> it's like a marbled gray color. Interesting. 
Pricey. <clears throat> oh, I like this one a lot. The oversized uh, cable knit sweaters. I like these ones a lot. I like that other one a little bit more. <clears throat> like the cream colored one. We'll see. We'll see if they have that. Here's some of the bags. Um, let's see what else. What else? Okay, the tailoring looks really nice. Very classic. Um, more classic dresses. Um, the leather uh, culotte trousers. So these are like the flared pants. Um, these provide a very unique perception here with the silhouette of it, how it just like tapers out towards the bottom. Um, you know, it's kind of like a like an A shape um, or like a pyramid shape. Um, yeah, those look really nice. I like those a lot. Let's see what else they have for the women's before we go to the men's. I don't know. Tell me your favorite piece. Do you guys like any of these? Uh, let's see. What else? What else? More tailoring, more bags. Okay. I like this trench coat. Um, jewelry. Um, oh, here's that two piece or here's the sweater for the, with that crab jacquard. Um, implemented into it i like the color of it all right so they have a lot of stuff for women a lot of uh jewelry heels glasses um, denim a lot of bags and shoes <laughs> all right let's go to the men's let's see what they got for the men's Uh, let's see here. Okay, so sweaters. That is a really nice collar. It's like very detailed. Oh, there we go. Right? It's a nice collar. Very unique. All right, we have some uh, nice wool jacket. Um, what do we got? Okay, bags. Boots. Um bags more bags oh i like these a lot look at these sunglasses oh those are fire those are fire oh i like those those are sick what do you guys think yeah those are sick oh i like those Yeah, those are fire. Oh, they have uh, brown ones too. Ah, eh, those not so much. I don't like the lens color. But these are fire. Those look good. Yeah, let me know. What do you guys think of those? I think those are good. Those, those look really good. All right, some more bags. Um, shoes. Um... Oh, what you guys, what do you guys think of these? So these are the men's version of the boot realized in knit, knitted cotton with sock effect. So they they must have some type of lining inside that keeps them up. And they have like a like a thin. Well, I guess it's like pretty thick, right? Leather bottom. But I don't know. Would you guys wear these? I feel like these would be pretty comfortable to wear, like around the house. But I don't think I would wear these outside, right? They probably get dirty like super quick. You're essentially wearing socks with a padded bottom on them. Um, oop. All right, some more. Uh, so the leather shirt, leather hoodie. So this hoodie is made out of leather. This whole outfit, actually. I mean, honestly, it looks like something you could get at Lululemon for, you know, up 1% of the price. <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay, so sh shirts, more glasses, uh, belts, some jewelry. Oh, here's the socks. Oh, here's the sweater too. Oh my God, look at these socks. These are crazy. These are a little too wild. Uh, scaling socks. <laughs> oh, look at, they're not even padded on the bottom. They're just socks. <laughs> oh man. Imagine wearing these outside. Holy cow. All right. Unique for sure. Um, oh, this coat I loved. I loved this coat. Uh, let's see. Coat with kimono silhouette, realized and felted Mulan. Mulan? Mulan wool with chevron pattern and special multicolor finish developed for the house. Features a special label on the interior. Yeah, this is beautiful. So this 100% wool. Okay, 69% wool. Some polyester, alpaca. That is a gorgeous color, isn't it? I like that a lot. Let's see what else. Oh, here's uh, that outfit. $12,000 for their shirt. Very unique for sure. Man. It's like, uh, that like bugs my eyes. <laughs> Okay, some more leather ties. Uh, okay, so this one, um, I think I, I said that this is probably leather, but it just has the ostrich print on it. So that's exactly what it was. Ostrich effect leather tie. More leather ties. More bags. Oh, this is a beautiful tailoring right here. gonna show okay perfect i like the tailoring on this this is really nice it's a beautiful color too it's a brown khaki and white speckle uh speckled fitted jacket all right more bags more uh sweaters boots oh these are cool um sunday slippers oh these glasses are nice too man bottega coming with the glasses these glasses are fire i never owned a pair of bottega sunglasses but i might have to look might have to look into them yeah those are nice what's this white one okay yeah those are nice too Very classic. Um, all right. That's Bottega Veneta. Um, talked about it for almost a whole hour. <laughs> uh, honestly, that's all I really had on the agenda. So what do you guys want to talk about now? I'm, uh, I'm open to talk about anything. Um, Let's see. Yeah, I don't think there was any other news. Um, let's see. Just go to Vogue. We really could talk about anything you guys want. You guys want to talk about other collections, other designers? That was really like the only news that came out today. Any other headlines just didn't seem very important.
Let's see what else. Fashion classics that will never go out of style. Okay, this is just e-commerce shopping. Mm. Let's check high cinebiety. They usually have a little, uh, they usually have articles on anything that's trending. Yeah, Aesop Rocky has become the face of Otega. He's been doing a lot for them, it seems like. Here, let's click on the article. Yeah, he's wearing like Bottega all the time now. I mean, he does, he makes it look really good. Oh, this is the orange jacket that I was talking about. Like he just he makes these outfits look so good. Kills it. And this was filmed right in front of the Bottega store on Melrose in Los Angeles. Um so I wonder if he just like went to the store, they fitted him and then they shot all these these photos um right before the release just to kind of give it some uh you know, make them go viral before the actual release. Um, which happened today. Yeah, he makes these outfits look so clean. Yeah, this like this is uh this is the coat that came out today. And this is the bag too. And the leather jeans. I bet this is leather too, this shirt. Huh, that's interesting. They sent him all the stuff before it even came out. <laughs> so while everybody's thinking like, oh, what is he wearing today? Okay. Um, looks like just some basic um, you know, blazer with some jeans. No, this is Bottega's resort collection. <laughs> oh, this is the all leather um like gym suit when he was running from the the paparazzi or running from TMZ the other day. And uh, everybody figured out that it was Bottega and this is like all leather. But nobody could figure out what these shoes were. If anybody knows what these shoes are, um, I would love to know. They look super unique, right? Yeah, what are those? I feel like those would be something... Like J.W. Anderson would make. Or maybe they're Bottega. They just haven't come out yet. Um, yeah, I really don't know. They have like this rubber like all the way around, it looks like. Yeah. If anybody knows, I, I'd love to know. <clears throat> All right. Well, I think that's it. Oh, look at we got this. Bottega's resort collection was already everywhere before we even realized it. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. She was wearing this exact look. Dang. So they were putting this right in our face before we even th before we even knew. Yeah, Timothy Chalamet. Okay. Ah, oh, Dua. Yeah, Dua Lipa was wearing this outfit. Ah, oh, interesting. Viral marketing. Very cool. Give these looks to celebrities and let them wear it out. Just doing everyday activities. Like Kendall Jenner here just going to the gas station. And she's wearing look like 53. <laughs> but, well, all right. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, anything else, guys? 
been over an hour now. Talked about Bottega for a whole hour. <laughs> what do Phoebe Philo's biggest fans think about her new brand? That could be an interesting article. Merrill's Hydro Mock. This looks like the Yeezy shoe. Oof, those are ugly. Um, oh, Pastel. We talked about that yesterday. The live stream. Go check it out. This will be interesting. Uh, Phoebe Philos. What do Phoebe Philos' biggest fans think about her new brand? What is it about Phoebe Philos' work that attracts such an ardent following? Is it the silhouettes, the fabrics, the colors, the intangible sense of Austrian stylish, stylishness that wafted from uh, Philo's stark runway shows or all the above? All I know is that the women who adore uh, Philo were so starved of her presence that when Phoebe Philo, the brand launched on October 30th, they snapped up so much of her debut collection that it nearly sold out in mere days. They say vote with your dollar, and the fans clearly want four more years of Phoebe. As a Philo neophyte, it all seemed utter, utterly inexplicable, inexplicable that jackets that cost that much as that jackets that cost as much as cars were flying off the digital shelves, all without anyone ever touching a thread. But it's only an inexplicable inexplicable to those who aren't philophils <laughs> philophils that's what she calls her fans uh philophils as some call phoebe files oh truest devotees okay i should have read the entire sentence uh god bless the craftspeople who made them but eighty five hundred dollars for a shopping bag let me go back to the rivers and lakes of old saline bags on ebay lol i'm not living like that Uh, Philo feels know that Phoebe Philo is selling out because of the silhouettes, the fabrics, the colors, the tiny details only visible to to the obsessives, willing to zoom all to willing to zoom way in on the model's photos. But above all, Phoebe Philo, the brand, is selling out because it's the physical manifestation of Phoebe Philo, the person. I love that Phoebe shot the lookbook herself using an iPhone. Oh, yeah. When you zoom in on these sunglasses, you could see here. We could take a look at this. So this is from Phoebe Philo's lookbook. And when you zoom in on the sunglasses, you see her just sitting down or standing up, just taking it with an iPhone. Isn't that cool? Uh, to understand the demand, uh, you must first comprehend the phenomenon of old Celine. In the old Celine days, it felt like Phoebe Fowler knew what we wanted to wear way before we did. It seemed to be the same in her new collection. Old, C old Celine is a catch-all decipher of, oh, old Celine is a catch-all descriptor of the Phoebe era which predates the current creative director, Hedy Slimane's tenure at the all caps Celine. How long is this article? All right, this is pretty long. <laughs> Probably not going to read all of this. Uh, maybe we can. Let's just do it. Uh, let's see, where were we? There's a before and after at the LVMH-owned Maison, a divide between BC and AD arguably more stark than any other leadership handoff in contemporary fashion. Slimane was brought, in, was brought in to make Celine more profitable. He was so successful that he managed to double the house's revenue to over 2 billion euros in under five years. Damn, that's good. 2 billion euros in five years for Celine? Damn, good for them. That's awesome. Um, man, that's crazy. I didn't know it was that profitable or bringing in that much revenue. 
good for them. Uh, but through, but though uh, Slimane Celine is a critical and commercial hit, it hasn't lured back the philophiles. They remain solely faithful to their idol. Oh, so this is an Instagram shop old Celine. Just all of her old. Yeah, gorgeous coat. Very classic. Old Celine is not just fashion. It's the continuation of my soul. A luxury personal shopper and founder of Shop Old Celine. Uh, Davini, Phoebe Philo, self-described biggest fan, told me that she once pretended that she lost her driver's license so she could take a new photo. This time, of course, fully clad in her Celine's grails. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I mean, she really has like a huge fan base still, huh? I mean, clearly we saw what like everything's selling out, but uh, Philo Celine was one of the first brands I connected with beyond just the product. Recalled hers founder and stylist Bonnie. Phoebe's clothes always make me feel comfortable yet dressed up. And isn't that what we all want? Uh, Philo's clothes are chic, but have a sense of humor, according to her, which is in itself a neat summation of Philo's appeal. People misunderstood Phoebe Philo and called her minimalist, called her work minimalist. It wasn't. It was always a mix of weird and refined, but more like essentialist. Yeah, that's what it seems to be right. like, right? Like you see like the that blue overcoat we saw up here. Like that's an essential for um for the winter, obviously. But it's also fun and just very chic. Um you know, like it says, like this person quoted, it's a mix of weird and refined, but more essentialist. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Uh 2008 jacket. Well, wow. there's like a lot of Instagrams like dedicated to her, huh? Huge fan base. Crazy fan base. Um, perhaps there's, uh, that's a better descriptor for Philo Celine than the new Phoebe Philo, which includes both a silk satin gown that drapes to the floor and $5,000 viscose twill trousers hand combed down their furry front. Surely the new brand betrays follows essentialist past. No? It is a firm Stavonine. Uh it is a firm Stavine. Fellow Philo's number one fan. <laughs> but it's not a departure. She instead poised that Phoebe Philo updates the essentialist air of old Celine with an additional dash of charisma. It's not old Celine's 2.0 old new Celine, but another thing entirely. Okay, so they're saying it's not a continuation of Celine, but this is like a whole new thing. I love the new collection. This collection feels cooler and rawer than her work as Celine. There's no archive to fall back on, but they're already created clear, understated brand codes. Interesting. A Phoebe Philo is simply an evolution. It's just the latest entry in the ongoing Phoebe Philo saga, one that was written by Philo herself at Chloe, then at Celine, and then by her friends in the interim period. The new collection is different from her prior work. It looked at, if looked at superficially, but to the trained eye of a Phoebe of a Philophile, there are many references to her prior work. These references include both obvious cues like tailoring techniques and subtle touches that Davini describes as charming details that only make sense in person. You think that Phoebe Philo's online only launch would upset those cues out would upset these cues, but going out but going off the depleted web store, you'd be wrong. Celine 
Some philophiles, faced with the suddenness of the drop model that fuels the Phoebe Philo brand, dove headfirst into the new collection without a second thought. Sure, it was pricey, but then again, these aren't just clothes. I fell immediately in love with the chunky mum necklace. It's continuing what I said before. I never knew that I needed a mum necklace, but somehow Phoebe knew that I did. Other fans practice patience. Philophiles already waited nearly five years for Philo's return. What's another couple weeks for the second drop? These aren't mere clothes after all, but a way of life. I've always saved up to buy Phoebe's designs. I feel like I'm buying into something bigger. There's a filter for how you see a world. Interesting article. Yeah. The Phoebe Philophiles. I can't believe they bought everything so quickly. Matter of a couple days, everything sold out. Um, uh, yeah. She's making a lot of noise for sure, coming back. Good for her. Good for her to step away for so long, six years, and then come back. All right. Um I really got nothing else. Anybody want to talk about anything else? All right, I'll just close up shop then. Um, nobody has anything else, then uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll just close it down here. All right, so uh, everybody that came along, thanks for coming to the live stream. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Tell people to come and join us on the live stream. Like I really think. This could be really cool. And uh, I appreciate everybody that comes along, leaves a comment, likes the video, subscribes to the channel, tells people about it. Um, you know, I think this live stream could be more like a show. That's why I named it the Immaculate Show. I want people to come on and join in on the discussion, no matter who you are. If you have an opinion about a shoe, um, a collection, a designer, I want you to come on and tell us what you think. Um, yeah, so I think as soon as like we continue to get bigger, then we could start having guests on, start asking journalists or maybe even designers to come on and join us. You guys could ask questions to them as well. And, uh, yeah, I think this could be a lot of fun. So, like I said, like the video, subscribe to the channel, tell people about it. Um, I appreciate all of you and I'll see you next time. Have a good weekend. See you on Monday. Peace.